In my early career, when I was a SOC Tier 1 analyst working at an MSSP, I would see a lot of analysts do some terrible mistakes. And I get it. It is a fast-paced environment and mistakes are bound to happen. But if it is a mistake that happens over and over again, that says something. For example, I've seen some analysts cross-contaminate, meaning providing another client's information to a different client. That is never a good time. Investigations have no value or little to no effort was put into it. And lastly, they focus way too much on a single artifact. I don't want you to be doing the same thing because this is going to not only hurt you, but the organization as well. So here are five traits that will make you a good SOC analyst. And the last one is important. Starting with the first one, thinking big picture. Way too often, a lot of analysts simply tackle the alert that is in front of them and do not think about anything else. Is that always a bad thing? Not necessarily, but what makes it bad is that they don't focus on the other events or the alerts that might be correlated. For example, I want you to imagine one alert for brute force activity related to the account of Bobby. For those that don't know, brute force is where someone or something is trying to authenticate to an account using various different password combinations. Now I've seen analysts where they take the brute force alert and only focus on those failed events within the alert and do not look at anything else such as a successful login attempt. Why? <laughs> Don't do this. Instead, think bigger picture. Ask yourself, what else happened? Did Bobby log in? Where is Bobby failing to log in? Is Bobby's account trying to log into other machines? Or maybe there was a recent password reset. By asking yourself these questions, you will open a lot of pivot points for you to find more information. Always think about the bigger picture. The second one is understanding the objective. When an alert comes into the queue, it is extremely easy to get lost in the millions of events and go into rabbit holes. But you as an analyst must take a moment to pause and zoom out just a little. You want to understand your objective before you dive in. And thankfully, there are some playbooks that can help guide you. But if you don't have a playbook, you'll need to ask yourself some of the questions. What are you trying to look for? Or why are you trying to look for that specific thing? Now, let's take the brute force example from earlier. If you receive a brute force alert, you want to understand the objective by first understanding the alert. What exactly is a brute force? Again, it is where someone or something is trying to authenticate to an account using various different password combinations. Great. Knowing that, what are you trying to look for? Well, if somebody is trying to break into your house, you probably would want to know if they got in, right? Right? <laughs> you want to check for any successful logons from the account to see if they were able to log in. The third one is doing your own research. This is one of the secrets to becoming a great SOC analyst. Very rarely do people research and I can't tell you why that is. Now, I could provide some assumptions and those could be maybe due to a lack of researching skills, not sure what to research or how to Google, or perhaps there's just way too much information out there and people are just not sure what to look for. Regardless of the reason, you must try and start somewhere. The information is out there. You just need to find it. And I want you to get to the point where you're comfortable in doing your own research. If you have seen my previous project videos, I know that there will be some parts where some folks will experience errors. And trust me, nothing makes me smile more than seeing those who encountered those errors and were able to troubleshoot their way out. This makes me know that they are capable of doing their own research. And in a SOC environment, everybody is going to be busy but usually the team is willing to help when needed. However, I would encourage you to do your research first before asking your team. For example, if we take the brute force alert, specifically within Windows, you will see an event code called 4625 under security. Now, don't ask your teammate what does that event code mean. Instead, perform a simple Google search and that will help you find the answer. You want to always research first and then ask later. This is a great segue into the fourth reason, which is ask questions. This is not limited to asking questions to your team, but also asking questions to yourself. Similar to what I mentioned earlier, if you're investigating an alert, 
ask yourself, what are the objectives? And what are you trying to look for before diving into the alert? Whereas if you really aren't sure what to do or what a certain event does, you shouldn't be afraid in asking questions to your team. If you really don't know, you don't know. And if you don't ask, you'll never learn. However, if I could recommend something to you, it would be this. Do your research first. And when you ask your question to your team, you can then say, hey, I've checked this and that, but it wasn't clear to me. And I was hoping if you could take a couple minutes to help clarify this for me. This approach will allow your team to know that you actually tried to research, but you just couldn't find the answer, which is perfectly fine. A lot of people would appreciate and like to see this kind of stuff. Don't be scared to ask questions. The last one is willing to put in the work. This is the most important piece in becoming a great SOC analyst. And I'll be real with you. A SOC specifically in an MSSP is a fast-paced environment where everyone won't have much time before they move on to the next alert because they're trying to keep up with SLAs, service level agreements. And with the hundreds of alerts that are in the queue, it is tough to really focus on what matters. And it is very easy to opt for the easy way out, which is finding a similar alert that was done by a previous analyst, copy the work, change a little bit of things, and send it off to the client. <laughs> this doesn't benefit you at all and has a high chance of cross-contamination. Again, meaning sending data from client A over to client B, which ultimately hurts the business at the end of the day. I want you to honestly do better. When you receive an alert, I want you to think big picture, Understand the objective, do your own research, ask your questions, and finally, be willing to put in the work. If you notice a lot of alerts that are coming into the queue, especially if they are the same alert and have the same outcome, I want you to open up a ticket to tune these out. And don't sit idle hoping for it to stop, because that's simply not going to happen, unfortunately. If there is a tuning ticket already opened and nothing is being done, I want you to escalate it. Why? Because if the same exact alert are flooding the sock, guess what will happen? It will lead to alert fatigue. And alert fatigue will lead to the risk of missing a true positive. A true positive will lead to a client being compromised. A client being compromised will lead to a client questioning the sock's ability. And once that happens, the business is at risk of losing that client. At the end of the day, we must remember that cybersecurity is a business function. We are here to make money for the business. And if we lose the client, we're doing the exact opposite, which is something we do not want. So I want you to put in the work and not only will you grow, but the business will grow as well. To recap to becoming a great SOC analyst, number one, Think big picture. Don't focus on a single alert and event. Always think about what else. Number two, understand the objective. Before querying and looking for related events, always ask yourself what the objective is, as this will help streamline your process. Number three, do your own research. If you don't know, research. The answer is out there, you'll just need to find it. Number four, ask questions. If you can't find the answer, ask your team. Don't be scared. Number five, willing to put in the work. Don't do the bare minimum because that is not good enough. Take a couple extra minutes to provide value and get better every single time. So those are the five traits of becoming a great SOC analyst. And if you work on those, you'll be someone that every SOC would want to employ. And that is it for the video. I hope you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.